Good morning. This is All India Radio Kohima. The morning news are read by Jonas Yantan. NDA presidential candidate Draupadi Murmu has scripted history by becoming the first tribal leader to be elected as the president of India. She is the first president to be born after independence and is the youngest to occupy the top post. Murmu is also the second woman to become the president. Murmu won by an overwhelming margin against Sinha after receiving over 64% valid votes in a day-long counting of ballots of MPs and MLAs comprising the Electoral College to succeed Ramnath Govind as the country's 15th president. After the end of the counting process that continued for more than 10 hours, returning officer P.C. Modi declared Murmu as the winner and said she got six like 76,803 value of votes against the opposition's candidate Yashwan Sinha's three like 80,117 value of votes. President Ramnath Govind, Vice President Naitu and PM Modi, among many other dignitaries, congratulated Draupadi Murmu on being elected as the 15th President of India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated Draupadi Murmu on this feat. In a series of tweets, Modi said, India has scripted history. He said, at a time when 1.3 billion Indians are marking Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, a daughter of India hailing from a tribal community born in a remote part of eastern India, has been elected as our president. The Prime Minister said Murmu's life, her early struggles, her rich service and her exemplary success motivates each and every Indian. Modi said she has emerged as a ray of hope for our citizens, especially the poor, marginalised and downtrodden. Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio, on behalf of the people of Nagaland, has congratulated Draupadi Murmu on winning the presidential elections 2022. Rio extended best wishes to Murmu as she prepares to take up the responsibilities and challenges of the high office. Minister for Soil and Water Conservation, Geology and Mining, NSMDC, V. Kashiho Sangdam, yesterday inaugurated three mobile soil testing laboratories at the Directorate of Soil and Water Conservation, Kohima. Speaking at the program, Kashiho said that the state now having three mobile soil testing laboratories, in addition to the soil testing laboratories in all the districts, will aid the farmers in monitoring the health of the soil and apply location-specific management practices. Stating that Nagaland is primarily an agrarian state where more than 70% of the population is engaged in agriculture, he said one must realise that successful agriculture is dependent on healthy soil to produce food sufficient to feed the ever-increasing population. Kashio also informed that the state has block-level mini-soil testing labs coming up very soon in all the blocks which will cater to the soil testing needs in remote areas. He also said efforts are being made to issue soil health cards to all the farmers in the state in a phased manner and also assist the farmers with organic fertilizers, biofertilizers and micronutrients basing on the soil test report so that the health of the soil can be monitored and managed properly. Kashio said this will keep the soil alive and healthy for sustainable production. He added that two biofertilizer production units at Rotimi village in Zanaputo district and Seyuchung town in Gifre district will be functional in a few months. Kashio said proposal for another 10 biofertilizer production units are with the finance ministry for consideration. Civil Aviation Ministry has said that airlines cannot charge any additional fee for issuing boarding pass at the check-in counters at airports. This clarification came following reports that the airlines are charging an additional amount for issuing boarding passes to the passengers. In a tweet, the ministry said, This additional amount is not in accordance with the instructions given under provisions of Aircraft Rules 1937. The ministry advised the airlines not to charge any additional amount for issuing boarding passes at airport check-in counters as the same cannot be considered within the tariff as provided under aircraft rules. The second edition of the Northeast India Festival is being organised from 29 to 31st July at Central World in Bangkok by the Embassy of India in association with Trend MMS of India. 
The first edition of the Northeast India Festival was held in Bangkok in February 2019. This opened up substantial business opportunities for Northeast Indian business community, especially in the tourism, agro and food processing sectors. The focus of this year's festival will be on trade, investment and tourism promotion and exchanges in the field of culture, education and people-to-people connections. The three-day event will be inaugurated on 29th of July. Minister of State for External Affairs Dr. Rajkumar Ranjan Singh will be the chief guest at the festival. The festival will also witness participation of chief ministers and other ministers from North Eastern states along with senior government officials. Senior dignitaries from Thailand are also expected to grace the inauguration and attend the festival. A large contingent of artists, including musicians and dancers, craftsmen, business persons, exhibitors, tour operators and academicians from the northeastern states are expected to travel to Bangkok to participate in this festival. That is all we have in this morning news bulletin. Have a good day. 